Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're having an amazing day as we get closer to AMD announcing the Ryzen 9000 series of processors. There are a lot of leaks, of course, concerning Zen 5 and just other products in general. I'm sure that you can all agree that Zen 5 has a lot of hype behind it and there have been a lot of performance figures associated with it, both in terms of clock frequency, single and multi-thread performance. And frankly, I will be very excited to aim for AMD to just reveal what the actual scope is of this processor and to give us much more insight into the architecture itself. With that said, there has been a CPU-Z screenshot which has leaked, which really does seem to be very exciting on first glance. We're looking at almost a 20% improvement in performance versus a 7950X, and this is courtesy of improvements in IPC, and it also seems that a clock frequency bump of around 100 megahertz has also been achieved. Now, if this result is accurate, and I have to say that I do have some issues with this, and we'll go down the list of why in just a moment, and it would be an early-ish engineering sample so of course a retail variant of the processor could differ in many different ways there could be bug fixes which would perhaps improve performance maybe some uh, changes to the memory controller maybe better you know improvements here or there higher clock frequencies but ultimately speaking if this is an accurate result, it's pretty interesting, but again, I have some issues. But let's first of all have a look at the screenshot and kind of give some um, credit here. So, this is originating from the Beidou forums, but is also from HXL or 9550 Pro on Twitter. Now, I won't go over all of the screenshot because, well, frankly, I'll be here for about 15 months, but you can see, of course, it is Granite Ridge. TDP is 170 watts, and it does seem, again, like it is a 16-core processor. Naturally, it is on the AM5 socket, and we've seen a variant of these engineering sample codenames before, and you can also see, again, that it does say ES right there. Now, the single thread score is 910, which is pretty impressive. Now, the clock frequency is basically reading here to be a little bit faster, as I said, than the 7950X. It's scoring, oh, sorry, it's 100 megahertz faster. Of course, you know, clock frequencies can differ from processes for a plethora of reasons, but let's just make things real simple for this video. So 910 points for the ES here. So WCCF Tech have done a nice um, comparison. So we're looking at essentially the same speed as a 4900K, a little bit faster than a 13900K, but noticeably faster than the 7950X, which is roughly 770 points, and versus a 5950X in the same benchmark, you're looking at 650 points. So that's, again, pretty impressive overall. Now, interestingly, a source of mine has essentially told me that CPU-Z, ironically, is one of those benchmarks that Zen 5 doesn't seem to be doing super well on. Now, whether that's true or not, or whether that's because of variants of engineering samples, who the hell knows? Again, my own sources have told me multiple different IPC figures, and I've gone over this much more extensively in a recent video, but as a kind of too long didn't watch of that video, basically I've heard anything from high teens in terms of IPC, to 30-ish percent. Now, integer performance does seem to be very impressive for these processors, and uh, AVX performance is up to 2x. However, the caveats are, in some instances, it just doesn't seem to hit this. Now, I don't honestly know why I've been given multiple reasons. One is some of these results are simply fake, which is very possible, or in the case of Granite Ridge, it's simply because, well, it's bandwidth constrained. Um, Basically, the memory, um, basically, it just can't get data from the memory fast enough. And obviously, you do have caches on the CPU and so on, but it's not the same thing as having like 16 or 32 gigabytes or what have you memory running at like much faster speeds. And that's one reason that Turing is going to potentially be much better because the memory controllers for Turing have been significantly improved over Genoa. And obviously, you've also got a shit ton of memory controllers as well, sorry, memory channels as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see the scaling. I've also heard some theories that single versus multi thread results could differ. Personally, I'm still in the camp of around 20 ish percent IPC, give or take. Um, again, I have had sources tell me higher than that. But whether that's an average benchmark or not, it's very difficult to know. And personally, I'm always like to be 
a little bit, uh, let's just say I like to have lower estimations. And then if it turns out to be like 15 or 18% IPC on average, I don't get too disappointed. So why do I think that this benchmark is most likely fake? Well, one reason is that CPU Z is notoriously easy to fake. I think it was, um, I think it was Chips and Cheese did a uh, article maybe a year or two back and they were really going in depth into this of like how easy it is to fake cpu z results so that is worth checking out if you're inclined to do so but there are some other reasons now one of them is just the sheer amount of stuff which is blurred out one of the big ones is actually the manufacturing process it's common knowledge that it's the 4nm process so why would you blur that out it's potential that they just couldn't be bothered to edit it, you know, like in Photoshop or whatever. Because, again, it's not like this is some secret. It's not like, you know, it's not like this is some holy grail that no one knew before. It Again, it's, it's very common knowledge. There's also the cache structure, which is blurred out. Again, why would they do that? Also, if you look under the instructions, the supported instructions, that is, AVX um, VNNI is missing. And it does seem that this is supported with Zen 5 and presumably Granite Ridge. In fact, um, I've been told by sources that it is in Granite Ridge. And honestly, it would make very little sense for it to be, let's say, in Turing, but not Granite Ridge. So it's kind of weird how that is not being listed here. I suppose it's possible that something hinky is going on with CPU Z. And for some reason or another, it's not being detected. But again, I don't think that that's very likely. Another thing that I'm a little bit skeptical about is actually the clock frequency. Now, I have been told that there are some engineering samples that do run at 5.8 gigahertz. In fact, I've even heard 6.1. However, I believe that that may be the F max of the chip and not necessarily something that the CPU actually boosts to. But 5.8 does seem to be something that a CPU can hit. However, most engineering samples that are out in the wild, again, to my understanding, I could be wrong, and I would love for this to be a legitimate result, but most that I've seen anyway do seem to be running at just, um, well, lower speeds, like 5.5 gigahertz. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether this is legitimate or not. Um, personally, I think it's quite likely to be fake. Um, and if that's the case, that is a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Oh, and just a little bit of additional info, actually. Um, there have been, of course, some reports that these CPUs, that is the Ryzen 9000 series, will launch in August. Um, that was recently leaked by a small form factor PC builder, and they basically said that uh, it looks like the processors are going to be available in August. However, there has been some conflicting leaks that we could see these processors launch in late July. I honestly don't know which one's true. I haven't had a specific date told to me. I, I mean, realistically, I think that July to early September is the launch window. Um... Because if you think about it, if they're announcing these things in Computex, you can look at AMD's historical release schedule from when they announce the processor or GPU, what have you, versus when it actually becomes available on store shelves. And again, it's not like it's something where they're going to announce the processor and then we're waiting like 12 months for it to become available. So I think around that kind of time frame, it's going to be very interesting to see what their strategy is for the pricing, especially of the motherboards. Um, the uh, and this is something else I haven't covered, so I'm just going to throw it in here just for the sake of it. But it seems that AMD are skipping the 700 series naming schemes for the board, so they're basically going to be going from the 600 to the 800. You will, of course, be able to do like a BIOS flash. So if you already own like um, a Zen 4 CPU and you want to switch, so for example, let's say you have an 8 core and you want to move to a 12 core, then you're good to go. You can just basically do a BIOS flash, and yeah, then if you buy a board. Um, that's kind of older or cheaper, uh, then obviously it might be a little trickier. And then obviously there may be different, uh, you know, kind of things you need to do. You may need to do a BIOS flash. Obviously most motherboards now do allow you to flash the BIOS without a CPU being present anyway. So it's not such a big deal as it was back in the day when you had to like, uh oh, my, my board isn't booting with this old, with this new processor. I need the old processor and now I've given that to my friend or I've sold it. Oh dear, I am pretty boned. <laughs> Those are not fun times. 
Uh, anyway, I will be very interested to see what the launch schedule is. The rumours are that all of these processors, apart from the X3D Vunge, which are going to launch next year, so the uh, 6, 8, 12, and 16 cores, they will all launch essentially simultaneously. So I think that's good. I don't really like staggered launches, especially for things like CPUs, honestly. If I had my way, I would also get the X3D variant launching simultaneously as well, because I just think it's good for consumers. Obviously, the more, you know, products you've got available, you don't have to kind of like guess and all of that. And I think a lot of folks are interested in the vanilla versions, but I think really it's the X3D variants that are going to be very, very, very interesting. I will also be very curious um, <laughs> to see how these things compare against um, Arrow Lake. I've heard so many conflicting things, and it's obviously very difficult as well, because it's like, you'll kind of test, even if two people, is it, even if a person has uh, an engineering sample of both processors, that is not necessarily indicative of retail, you know, silicon. So for example, you could have a situation where, and this is just an example, like Arrow Lake is like hitting like, 500 or 700 megahertz below the retail clock so there could be again issues on some specific element of the processor which means it's not as being as performant as possible with that said the igor's lab results for the ipc probably are re relatively accurate i have heard through the grapevine that uh, those were very pessimistic internal projections and intel have actually beat them but frankly until I actually see the processes in reality, I will be somewhat skeptical of that. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.